What is subtext? The subtext is the thing that is not being said. So if I say, uh, I'm very happy to meet you, um, what, is a, what am I not saying? Am I not, what's the thing I'm not saying is, I've been waiting for this appointment for six months, and I can't understand why it took so long. And then, you know, I, I'm very happy to meet you. Or, 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 or is it that, uh, or is it something else? It, you know, it's the thing that's not being said. And, and so that can come in a lot of forms. It can be, um, it can be the, uh, the history. You know, I, uh, again, somebody asks, how are you? And I say, I'm fine. And I don't give you my whole medical history, right? <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a long one. And uh, so I don't, I don't give that to you. But that's always behind. Every time I say I'm fine, the, you know, I'm a little bit grateful that I'm still alive, right? So that's, that's the subtext for me every time I say I'm fine. But if, if you say, uh, oh, here's a great way to explain subtext. Let's say that you uh, have renovated your house, renovated your living room, and put a lot of time and energy and money into it. And then a friend comes to the door for the first time, and they come in and they say, oh, you changed everything around. <laughs> right? What's the subtext, right? It's like they don't like it. That's the subtext, right? And, but if they come in and they say, you changed everything around, then you know that they did like it. So that's, we, subtext happens in our daily lives all the time. It's, you know, it, it affects the way that the line comes out. It's, it's the emotional, Sanford Meisner used to talk about, there's an, the, the emotions of the scene are a river, the words are boats that float on that river. So the subtext is the emotional river. Of, of, of the scene or, or the, of the character. And um, so, uh, and, and so sometimes it's a line reading, you know, those were two different line readings for two different subtexts having to do with this one topic. Um, it can be, you know, a different, a different history. Uh, it can be a different uh, verb. That, that's what I did with the verbs with uh, don't lie to me. Could I read a few couple, a few lines? These are mine that I came up with. Yeah. Oh, great. Okay. okay. And, and so th maybe you can uh, critique me on my delivery of them and also <laughs> uh, the subtext. And uh, it could, it could okay. be. Okay. So the first one is, um, I love that dress on you, Judith. Did Paul tell you? He did tell you, right, that we used to date. Here's another one. Dad knows. He wants the money put back in his account immediately. Okay, last one. Your check is waiting for you in payroll. Security will walk you down and you have five minutes to clean out your desk. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you're, you. you're hired. Okay, I, great. I'm gonna cast you. You're okay. fantastic. Okay, thanks. But uh, the, so so different different meanings for each one. So maybe we could start with the "I love that dress on you." By the way, did Paul tell you? Meaning, it's someone trying to sort of undercut someone. Compliment. I don't know. That that's how I read into it. Sure, sure. Yeah, I think I, I think. Uh, well, I think. You absolutely got the idea of subtext. The the I love that dress on you that is not to be taken literally. Sure, and, it, and it's a building uh, up. Yeah. it's uh, it has a reason behind it. That's not the literal uh, meaning of the words. It's yeah. So so subtext means that the things people say they're not. Uh, there, there's something else behind it. There's uh, you could call it an agenda or or. Uh, you know, there, there's there's something else. Now, in that case, in the case of the first one, the um, that person has a, is conscious of her agenda. I would say that that and her intention. I would say is to undermine the person she's talking to sure. with uh, the information that did you know I used to date Paul that that you're that you want to undermine 
uh, the person you're talking to. And by beginning with uh, uh, the compliment on the dress, it's it's a way to make the the knife in the <laughs> knife in the back even even sharper. Uh, you, you know, by by uh, it, it's an and it's an opposite. Okay, sure, it throws the person off their so, game a little. Yeah. yeah. So you're saying I I love that dress, but the with the attention to undermine. Right. Right. Is, uh, yeah. Lovely. Lovely. What What about the other? Did you want to talk more about the um, other two? Oh, okay. So dad knows he wants the money put back in his account immediately. So sibling to sibling, something's right. happened and involves money. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, well, uh, uh, I guess. Well, what what did you feel your intention was? You know, I guess you're right. When I when I look at it, it there's there's less subtext. It seems like it's pretty obvious, but I, I'm no, just, not obvious at all. Oh you no, could, uh, you could okay. do it. I, you could. I could do it completely opposite. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll just try it. Sure. Sure. Dad knows, and he wants the money put back in the account. Right away. That's that's true. That's a softer. That's a compassionate. Well, it's you know more caressing. Maybe I may, may you know it depends on the history between these two. Maybe this person has been having a rough time. Maybe the person that your character is talking to has been having a rough time, and uh, and uh, or, but maybe they both colluded on this re rearranging of funds, and. And maybe it's I'm the one that has to put the, the the money back. I think the way you wrote it exactly doesn't make it doesn't ha make it have to be the person you're talking to. So, so uh, you know, it's dad knows, and he wants the money put back. Yeah, maybe it's like very practical. My dad knows he right. wants the money put back immediately. Cover blown, right? That's true. It could be played different ways. So, so the so the questions you have, or if you're looking at those lines on a page, are you know what is the history? Did the two of these did these two siblings did they collude on these uh, on whatever happened to these uh, funds, or right. or uh, or is it the fault of that one, or even just the fault of this one? So that's where those are the kind of questions that I always start out with. If lines like that are on a page, uh, you know, I I ask, you know, what what's the history of this uh, caper, whatever was done with the money, right? Yeah, I like that. And then lastly, it was just and maybe more self-explanatory. Just um, you know, your check is waiting for you in payroll. Security will walk you down after you've cleaned out your desk, and you have five minutes. Yeah, well, that's a that's an example of something that could be thought of as exposition, but uh, the way that you you read, you gave it an intention to punish, right? Which, which is very re reasonable that that this is the person who's up to here with right. with that uh, with that person who's being relieved of their duties, and um, and the subtext that I heard when you read that was that. This person is off my back, out of my, you know, this person, it's, this nightmare is is gone. But but again, it, if you saw it on the page, there's other possibilities that it could be. It, 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 it could be that this, that the person speaking fought to keep this, uh, fought to keep this, uh, this person at their job. And, uh, and it, they could even be crying. Or they were the reason the person was fired. So yeah, there could be different. It could be yeah, you know yeah. I, I thought your choices were just marvelous, <laughs> but 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 that's a very uh, helpful uh, example about you know if we saw e each of those lines on a page, we could really ask all these questions to get at what what their subtext is, and would it depend on the tone in which they're said? Well, tone is another word for verb, I think, you know, like a, a teasing tone is the verb to tease. So, uh, yeah, tone is another way of talking about it. Great. Um, I, I like the verbs because they're so, because they're so uh, muscular. If a scene does not have subtext, what can a director do to add it in? You have to believe that it does have subtext and look for it. That's 
I, I, I just feel that so strongly that uh, there's no... So, sometimes when I was teaching workshops on uh, with actors and directors working together and w bringing in scenes that they'd worked on, and sometimes people will say, well, this is a very straightforward scene. And I would just say, I want you to take that out of your vocabulary. This is a straightforward scene. There's no such thing. And it, it, if, if it really is, then probably should be rewritten so that there's something extra in it, you know, so that there's some twist, something that, that lets us into the personalities and predicaments of these, of these characters and, or foreshadows something in this story that, uh, yeah, a straightforward scene probably doesn't belong in the movie. So, so, uh, so, and sometimes they need to be rewritten, but, uh, but sometimes the, the filmmaker hasn't looked hard enough for, uh, for something else that could be there. That's what I think. So is straightforward almost code for there's no life to it, that's, it's too dry? Well, it's code for exposition. Oh, okay. Or, or uh, connector, a connector scene. This is a connector scene. This, uh, yeah. Right, okay. So when you talked about Neo in the one scene in your book, um, you said it was sort of a connector scene, but it seemed like that wasn't that straightforward. I mean, there was... You know, he's having a memory of a restaurant, I believe. Oh, yeah. It's mind. partly, you know, how great the writing is. But because uh, so much is evoked and such, there's so much imagery in it. There's so much uh, imagery, the image of the, of the, uh, the uh, noodle place. Of the, yeah, the image of the noodle place. It, it's so important. You know, it, it gives us so, because we see very little of, um, of, uh, of Neo when he's Thomas Anderson, you know, at the beginning of the of the movie, and and this gives us a whole picture of Thomas Anderson sitting alone in the noodle place on his lunch hour, or with somebody, you know, and uh, and it, it it it's it evokes it it, it it takes us somewhere. I mean, he goes somewhere. We go with him. 